Hey guys, Len Stewart Pixel Plopper here. Uh, I'm going to be doing the part two of the isometric furniture making. And uh, as you can see here, I already started some of this. I, I kind of want to keep this as quick as possible, this video, but because I'm going to cover two things. I'm going to cover, the, you know, the, how you pretty much make an object like this um, more complex. And uh, how you can take photos from the internet. There's my TV there. Hold on. And the toilet. <laughs> I was gonna. I, I shrunk down a toilet and made this. Um, so basically, I, I really want to show you how to make like more complex objects. How to make a chair like this, and then how to make it so you have the opposite of this, so it's facing the other way. All right. So we'll, let's start with the chair first, since it's right here. Um, as you can see, I just really did a simple chair here. This is all I did. Um, you can make chairs as complex as you want, or like me, you can make them like that. Uh, but what's really important is I, I, I feel like um, it, with chairs, chairs are simple to make by themselves, right? But if you want to make like a pair and you want one to go the other way, that's when people start having problems. Uh, which is easy enough to fix because what I will do is show you how to do that. Um, you can duplicate the one you have and uh, I like putting it right next to the other one on the grid, aligned to, to the uh, grid here. And I will take this and I will move it. Oh my god, it looks like shit. <laughs> no. um, uh, so there's that and I will change some of the colors on this suit so it's not as blendy with the seat as it is there Keep some highlight on it, whatever you want to do. And then of course the legs here, because they still look like they're off the one side. And you can see that I just moved them over one pixel. And there you go. Now you have a front and back version of a chair. Um, I kind of don't like how this looks, but you get the idea. If you're making a chair and you want to do this, this is pretty much how you do it. Uh, you can also do the same thing with um, a toilet. Now this toilet, I, like I said, I took it off the internet um, and I shrunk it down. So let's get rid of the whiteness around here. Oh, got the wrong layer selected. Here we go. Okay. course I'm gonna clean this up I figure a toilet is kind of like a seat but a little bit more complex so than my chair all right uh, so there is my toilet. And I barely had to do anything to it because I just snagged it off the internet. We can change some colors. We can make it, um, let's make it a real enough looking toilet here. Okay. 
I think that's decent enough. I might have to fix some of this here. Kind of eating away at it here, aren't I? Uh, <clears throat> well, that's good enough right now. Um, all right, so if I wanted to take this and I wanted to turn it around, right? I'll just do the exact same thing like I did with my chair. go and I try to take this and I move it to the back like so And of course, <clears throat> I'm going to need to clean it up because it kind of looks a little weird. And there you go. You you have the backward facing version now. Of course, you're going to want to clean your version up. Mine is kind of all over the place. So there you go. Uh, another thing I want to show you. You can tell I'm like trying to do this really quick. Um, the reason is is because my last uh, video was like an hour, and I figured, man, who's going to sit here and watch this thing for an hour? Uh, so I wanted to kind of get through some of these topics a little faster. Um, if you have any questions pertaining to some of this, like how I got to this point, or or uh, I don't I don't like your stuff because it looks dirty or whatever, just send me um, a message. Send me a message and voice your complaints or your concerns or uh, just ask any questions you might have. Um, I like hearing from people. So anyway, yeah, you, you know, you clean up your toilet and uh, there you go. You make it open or closed. I, I just made it closed because it was the one I snagged off the internet. So uh, with TVs, TVs you can tell that... Um, um, I did with a brush. So uh, in the first video, I showed you how you can obtain the uh, brush styles for different object, uh, different isometric objects. So you can see that I took, you know, that I just pasted this here, or I painted that there, <laughs> and then I started using, uh, and I started filling it out a little, and then this was my result. Um, and this is going to feed into the second part of my tutorial, which is um, showing you how you can um, make objects have uh, give out light. So here's the TV that I, that I did. Um, here's another TV that I did. This is the TV that I did from this one. This is the this is the TV that I ended up making into this. Um, this has two layers. This just has the um, the screen, which is a stylized layer, and the TV itself. So how did I make this screen? I'm going to show you how I did that. So on this TV that I did, I purposely left the screen out. I'm going to show you how to put a screen in. Uh, let's do a new layer. Whatever. You can paint it pretty much any color you want. I'm going to use gray because that seems to work the best, I think. Or at least the best for me. And uh, Okay, so I created a new layer here. 
and I'm just going to paint it. Um, I, I used my uh, magic wand to select the inside of that. So now that I still have that selected, I'm going to use the uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use uh, noise and add noise. This is pretty important. Um, like if you want static on your TV, you, um, I would just hit the monochromatic because you want it black and white. And Garrison is the one I prefer. I'll show you the difference in a second. Uh, there is really a difference this small, but maybe in another video I can get into how you can use to make this. Uh, you can use, um, I'm sorry, you can use add noise to make like gravel or some kind of like uh, grounding for uh, some kind of like floor. So I'm making basically light static. I'm going to go with light static for now because you don't want it too crazy for a TV unless you want static on there. That's cool too. Um, all right, so there's that. Now, uh, what I have on my other TV, I have two things here. I have a color overlay and I have an outer glow. So let me copy this and just show you uh, copy the layer style. Just show you how I uh, how I got to this point. Okay. Paste this in here. And there you go. That looks cool, right? But I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, so let's suppose I don't have any on here, and you hit outer glow. It's the outer glow of the screen. You can make it as big or as small as you want. It doesn't matter. I like to keep the opacity up. Uh, you want to be precise because if you do soften, it'll only do like from the center. But if you do precise, it'll take every little bit of edge and make it glow. I use blue. You can use any color you want. Um, and then and then with the color overlay, uh, I just went with blue again, and uh, I used a filter on it. So I used vivid light. You can use pretty much anything you want or anything you think looks cool. Uh, and then I had the opacity at 100%. Alright. So there's your TV. And there's your TV with light, which is going to bring me into my other discussion that I wanted to uh, go over here. Um, Alright, so suppose you have a room here's this room that I made I made it with two uh, different types of flooring um, wood and carpet and just the same wall pattern because I'm just going to show you how light how you can uh, make light react in a given environment so let's put the TV we just made in this room okay Uh, in another video, I believe it was called, hold on, I can find it for you right now, uh, Wall and Floor Lighting Pieces. I'll put this link in the, in the description as well, um, so you can reference this. W what this will show you is how I make, um, how I make light, light patterns, light, anything. So this was, of course, made with a paintbrush, and I kind of went around the whole thing, uh, with, um, uh, <laughs> with like the erase uh, tool to um, to basically kind of just give me a fade that I want and of course like it, it's all like dithered um, I'll show you how I make that dithered in the other video as well so there's my TV here's my light I'm going to show you how I do this I'm going to take this light duplicate it because I'm going to use it again for something else I want to show you later Now this might be a little big, 
So let's use something else, maybe. Let's use a smaller one. Here's a smaller one I did. Um, in part one, I showed you, uh, or I kind of like briefly um, went over that you should probably save things that you make in different files. So this is like my light file. It has all my light sources and fixtures and stuff like that. Anything that casts, you know, I, I use all of this. So let's take this small one, actually. This one looks really good. Flip it. And I like making them uh, color dodge, of course. It's my uh, staple for, I think, almost anything light source. Reactive. And there you go. It looks pretty cool, right? Uh, here's a here's a vending machine. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do this one too. Let's throw this over here. I'll put it in the middle of the room because I want to show you how I make light act a little later too. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this is two parts of this vending machine. It's just this basically, it's just basically this copied, right? What I did was to make it that bright, I, or I'll show you, I can make it again cut this out. Uh, it is perfect. Okay, now it's perfect. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy that, paste it, and there it is, right? I'm going to make it brighter so it looks like it's lit. So usually what I do is I hit um, image adjustments and uh, exposure and I'll mess with it until I get something I like. Uh, it's looking like my my original one isn't it? Alright so there it is it looks like it's lit up from inside. Now you don't quite have the glow that you'd get from my original. So let me show you how I do that. I'm going to copy this like I did with the TV. It really only has an outer glow. So let's do the copy layer style. Paste. And I'll show you what's in this. This is... Alright, so it's a color dodge, obviously. Because I like doing color dodges. What can I say? And um, here's the size. You can make it any size you want. You can make it pretty thick or whatever um, or not I don't really like it too thick so let's keep it down to right there six and seven um, this quality this is pretty useful as well you can uh, it, it's better to use uh, soften for this not necessarily precise see I'll show you precise and I'll... It's not too bad, but it still looks a little artificial. Um, so that's why I like using Soften. And turn that down a little. And this this quality, it, it basically gives you a brightness factor into what you want to do here. So let me go back to seven for this one, and six for the other. And the brightness factor, let's quiet that down. And jitter, jitter, I believe, oh, it doesn't do me any good here. Okay. So there you go. You have a, you have a lit um, vending machine. Now I'm going to show you my lamp. Lamps are, lamps are going to be uh, different than say a TV or or um, a 
vending machine because it gives off light and light might bounce off of different objects and not only that but um, you will want to cast shadows things like that uh, things you want to avoid with coming into contact with other light I'll show you that right now so here's my big blob like I was showing you before I'm going to do the color dodge thing on this and there you go it, it looks like a real light source in a way right now you can adjust this light source I like um, going to adjustments hue saturation and we can quiet it down a little we can bring up the brightness maybe and change the mood and there you have it move this around a little bit all right and there you and there you have it um, what we can do too is we can make um, like I was sh telling you just now about the light you can actually piece out portions of your light source um, actually you know what Let, before I show you how to do this it is really really important after you do a light source like this before you do any cutouts for shadow um, make a copy so just duplicate the layer and hide your original this way like if you screw up or if you don't like how it looks later you can go back and redo it um, alright so just you know cut, start cutting things out here we go alright so of course I'm going to just get rid of that Bam. now you have a light is coming from this direction obviously and it doesn't go past here and you can do that with the TV uh, okay so it's about this far away and it's that like this angle here um, we can make it cast a big shadow or a little one doesn't matter but of course when you hit the wall it's going to be a little different and there you have it trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you here um, it's best that when you are using light like this that you have um, floor and wall tiles to work with um, in another video I have on what's the video called I keep forgetting the name of my own videos um, making isometric floors and walls so this this one and the wall floor lighting pieces I'm going to um, put links for in this video um, so yeah I mean having floor and light here or floor <laughs> floor and light floors and walls here will really help you um, do these light things because it's gonna help you create the mood basically you're creating a mood here with your light um, and it depends on what you use as a base so if you're using like regular carpet as a base you might want to use a different color than uh, than your floor all right I hope that this was beneficial to you um, actually I want to show you one more thing I'm going to show you how to make a candle and candle light uh, all right so let's uh, duplicate my floor here and I'll show you 
in a different scene I'm going to make. How I'm going to make a candle. So in my inventory of light, I got all kinds of little candles and stuff like that. So as you can see, I have th this candle consists of three parts. The candle itself, uh, the light on the, the fire of the candle, which is really a, an illuminated pixel, and uh, the light under, or the light that is cast from the, from the can candle itself. All right, so let's make a, just a normal piece of shit candle. Ugh, God, that looks ugly. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so there we go. We can do that. And let's make it a little bit brighter on top here. You're going to have the fire on top there. All right, that's good enough. As you can see, I, I did do um, this one basically in the same manner. Just quieted it down with different things. So I can do that here too. So if you want to make the uh, candle itself a little cooler looking, I love using hue and saturation because it just gives you total control over the um, over the piece that you're working on. Whatever. Um, the light source is of course this fire here and I have a color overlay and uh, an outer glow. You really only need an outer, outer glow because what you can do is you can just do a white pixel. So let's do a white pixel. Put it right on top and I'm going to do an outer glow on that. And it's a very faint outer glow, but let's make it let's make it big. Uh, do a color dodge, of course. Bring the opacity up. And that's a cool looking candle glow, right? And of course you can mess with the quality and that'll give it some life. All right, so there you go. Um, the light that it's ca that is cast is that is totally up to you. You can make that as big or as small as you want it. Um, let me use the one that I have here to show you what I did. Um, it's on color dodge now, of course, but I'm going to make it normal so you can just see that this is all I did. I basically choose the gray color. Let's paint it gray. Uh, there you go and then um, you know put it under it and then you can do um, your color balance so if you want of course a yellow light coming off of here you can make it yellow and 
I'm going to put the color dodge back on. And there you go, you have like your, your admitted uh, light on the surface. Um, you can also do this above. I know this doesn't really look great below it. So let's put it above it. There you go. Sometimes, you know, you might want to do it either below or above, depending on uh, how the candle is or looks or how dark you want it or whatever. Um, the light itself, we can, we can make that brighter by using exposure, of course, or non-existent, whatever you want to do. And then you can take that. I, I like um, taking these candles and anything that I make like this and making it a, its own group because it usually consists of multiple parts. So we can do, well, the other one is candle V2. We'll do candle V3. And there you go. You have your candle there. We can put this in the scene, whatever you want to do. So there you go. Now you know how to make lights and objects and objects that admit light. I showed you how to make the uh, double facing chairs. I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, that's pretty much all I have to go over in this, um, um, in this part two of the isometric uh, furniture making. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I like hearing from, every, from everybody. Um, I think the next video I'm going to do will be, uh, on, uh, like windows and doors. I got a, I got a request for that the other day and I figured, well, it might be a good one to do. It's short. Um, so yeah, look for that in the coming weeks. Um, I'm going away pretty soon, so I probably won't be back for another month. So yeah, I expect that uh, that in a few months. I hope these two, this uh, part one and part two, was uh, beneficial to everybody. All right, guys, take care. Pixel Plop here. You know what to do. Subscribe. Do your thing. See you later.